Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Company Responsibilities AMEC recognize its responsibilities relating to health and safety of their workforce and the protection of the environment by providing their employees, and where relevant, subcontractor employees, with colon. Effective Working Procedures Safe Working Systems A safe, healthy, and environmentally sound working environment. Compliance with the above will be achieved by providing information training, instruction, competent supervision, good quality tools, equipment and personal protective equipment. The identification of hazards, assessment of risk and methods of control may be both the responsibility of a Mech and Kuwait oil company. Employees' Responsibilities A. Read, understand and obey the Shek policies arrangement, procedures and rules as issued. B. Always work in accordance with approved method statements and risk assessments as provided. C. Take care of their health and safety. Ensure their activities do not adversely affect the health and safety of others. D. Cooperate with the company in all matters of health, safety and environmental protection and make their contribution to reducing accidents and conserving natural resources. E. Never undertake hazardous operations nor operate any items of plant or equipment unless trained and authorized to do so. F. Develop a concern for personal safety and for the safety of others, particularly new employees and young persons. G. Set a good example. H. Report to immediate supervisor all incidents which have or could result in personal injury or environmental damage. I. Report to immediate supervisor any defects in plant or equipment or unsafe methods of work and ensure that plant, equipment and premises are left in a safe and secure state and place when unattended. Do no operate any item of plant or equipment which has become defective. J. Never deviate from an agreed method of working unless the supervisor or relevant manager has been notified and authorization has been obtained. K. Use the correct tools and equipment for the job, use safety equipment and personal protective equipment when required and return to store following use. Maintain and store PPE correctly. L. Check tools and equipment regularly and report all defects. M. Take care of company property provided for their use including welfare facilities. Refrain from horseplay and activities that may cause injury and slash or environmental damage. N. Report any personal industrial injury or industrial disease to their immediate supervisor and ensure that an entry is made in the accident book at their place of work. Quality is colon. ISO 9001, quality. An element of our business which is of equal importance to that of health, safety and environmental matters. An inherent feature in the product or services we provide in order to meet or surpass our customers' requirements. The responsibility of everyone. The company defines the means of meeting this commitment to our customers by way of a written policy statement which is endorsed by the company's senior authority and should be displayed on all notices boards. What is Sheck's role in this? The role of the Sheck Group is to facilitate the administration of the change slash improvements required and to monitor the procedures for compliance and effectiveness. How do we monitor compliance? The way we conduct our audits has changed significantly to that of years gone by in favor of a more informal approach. The majority of our trained internal auditors are personnel from a cross-section of corporate and project departments. The approach of auditors is to review procedures together with you the process owners with the aim of identifying improvements and eliminating, as far as possible, constraints in working practices. This approach removes the traditional anxiety associated with audits and confirms your influence as process owners. What is it? ISO, 14001, Environment. The International Standard for Environmental Management. 
the environmental equivalent of ISO 9000, applies to all contracts have to comply with the standard. Why? ISO 14001 is a formal system to ensure compliance with environmental policy and environmental legislation and ensures that we strive to continuously improve our environmental performance. How? Environmental impacts are managed through procedures, training, objectives and targets for improvement. You? ISO 14001 affects each and every one of us. We all need to be aware of what environmental impacts of our jobs have. Ensure we consider the environment in every aspect of our work. Understand Amex environmental policy. Work to procedures that reduce the environmental impacts of our work. Driving safety. Safe driving includes 1. Plan your route, leaving plenty of time. 2. Pulling over and stopping when using a mobile phone. 3. Allow time for adverse weather conditions. 4. Never overtake or carry out a maneuver if unsure of the outcome, if in doubt hold back. 5. Stop, have a break when necessary. 6. Using speed wisely, slow speeds can be as dangerous as speeding. Remember the speed limits. Drive within them. 7. Giving proper signals, other drivers are not mind readers. 8. Being courteous to other road users. 9. In poor conditions double the normal distance between vehicles. Driving. Check the following points before moving off. A. Make sure the vehicle is roadworthy. B. Make sure windows are clean and give clear vision. C. Ensure your windscreen washer bottle is full. D. In poor light, rain and fog, use dipped headlights, make sure the lenses are clean. E. Check tires for pressure and wear daily. F. Check brakes. Task Risk Assessment AMEC must ensure that those activities under our management and control undergo risk assessment in order to identify and assess those hazards and risks arising in order to comply with regulatory requirements. Comply with company policy and business requirements. Eliminate or reduce to as low as reasonably practical in terms of risk to human health, risk of damage to plant, equipment and environment, business interruption and or loss of production. Dot. Toolbox Talks a toolbox talk is designed to ensure all personnel within the activity team are aware of the potential hazards, control measures and work methods to conduct the work safety and in an environmentally sound manner. The Environment All personnel have a moral and legal obligation to limit the environmental impact of their tasks at all times. All personnel are encouraged to carry out their activities in such a manner that all noise is reduced to a minimum. No environmentally harmful emissions or discharges occur. All residues and waste products or materials are disposed of in an environmentally safe and healthy manner. And must therefore ensure that all emissions, discharges, residues and waste do not pollute the air, ground or water. Provide a safety or health threat to employees or others. All skips will be clearly marked as to what type of waste they contain. All waste products will be disposed of by an approved waste handling contractor. Key Environmental Considerations Waste Management All waste must be segregated into containers provided. Remember where relevant reduce, reuse, recycle waste. Chemical spills, in the event of a spill. Stop the source of the spill. Contain the spill. Retain all absorbents and dispose of them appropriately. Inform supervision. When conducting a task activity risk assessment remember to consider environmental issues. Identify potential discharges to air, water or land. Identify potential indirect discharges to air, water or land. Check for spillage or discharge into drainage system or land. Check drainage system is correct for substance discharged. Check for blocked drains. 
identify potential for unforeseen discharge route. Check for failure, inadequacy of containment, bund, drip tray etc. First aid and accident slash incident reporting. If you have an accident at work the following procedure should be used. 1. Injured party reports to the medic or first aider for treatment. 2. Medic, first aider provides treatment and completes the accident book. 3. Injured party, involved personnel report to their supervisor or manager giving details of the accident, incident. 4. Responsible person completes accident, incident form, identifying appropriate corrective actions. 5. The completed form is then forwarded to check advisor for review and additional actions if required. 6. Check advisor organizes input of the form and any outstanding corrective actions into the appropriate database. 7. Actions are followed up by agreed action parties and confirms to check advisor to ensure close out. If the injury is of serious nature, raise the alarm by the quickest possible means. State the location and nature of the injury. Do not move the injured personnel unless they are in immediate danger. Do not put yourself at risk. Do not administer first aid unless you are competent and have sufficient training to do so. Why must we report all accidents, incidents and near misses? A. To ensure suitable investigation and corrective actions to prevent recurrence. B. Legal reasons, reporting to the HSE. C. Insurance. D. Client requirements. E. Moral, the main asset of the company is its people, it therefore makes sense to look after T. Fire precautions. Make yourself acquainted with the fire procedures for the type of premises you are working in or for the type of work you are carrying out. Make sure that you know where the fire extinguishers are, how to use them, and the various types to use on particular types of fires. Place oily waste and other combustible materials in designated waste containers away from source of ignition. Smoking is forbidden near flammable substances. Emergency escape routes must be clear of obstructions. Dry powder extinguishers must be turned upside down and shaken once a week to avoid the powder solidifying. Report to the supervisor if an extinguisher has been discharged so that it can be replaced without delay. Ensure that the correct fire extinguishers are at the site of welding slash burning slash cutting operations. In some circumstances a fire hose, blanket may be required in addition to fire extinguishers. Actions on discovery of fire. 1. Raise the alarm, by pressing button, break glass. 2. Contact the control room, emergency response center or reception slash gatehouse as appropriate by the quickest means. 3. Providing you do endanger yourself or other persons. Attempt to fight the fire if you have been trained to do so. 4. Act as instructed by the authorized person, supervisor in charge. All other persons must proceed to their muster point via the designated route, unless designated specific duties in the emergency response team. Personal protective equipment. It is a mandatory requirement that safety footwear, without nails or exposed steel toe caps, safety helmet, Coveralls and safety spectacles must be work everywhere on site, except in office buildings. Gloves must be worn in any situation where injury, damage to hands could occur or in accordance with the glove policy. Additional protective equipment for example air defenders and dust masks must be worn as directed by the work permit or risk assessment. Eye protection 1. The wearing of safety spectacles is compulsory when on site except in the offices. 2. A tiny fragment in your eye could cause disaster. 3. You have a legal obligation under the PPE regulations to wear or use the eye protection provided. 4. Do not watch welding processes unless your eyes are properly protected. 5. Do not enter areas where eye protection is required unless you are wearing protective equipment. 6. Take care of any protective equipment issued to you. 7. 
Have any lost or damaged equipment replaced immediately. 8. Make sure your eye protectors are suitable for you and for the work being done. 9. The place for eye protectors is over your eyes, not on your head or around your neck. 10. Eye protectors are replaceable, your eyes are not. Noise. 1. Wear ear protectors at all times if exposed to a noise hazard. 2. Do not use cotton wool for ear protection, it is not effective. 3. Make sure ear plugs are a good fit in each ear and are correctly inserted. 4. Hands should be clean when handling all types of ear plugs. 5. Earmuffs should be a good fit to the ear, with an all-round seal. 6. Ensure earmuffs are worn the correct way round. 7. If you have difficulty in wearing any type of hearing protection provided, report it to your immediate supervisor. 8. Sudden noises may also harm your hearing. Wear ear protection when using grinders, riveters, compressed air cartridge tools etc. 9. It is compulsory for you to wear the correct hearing protection when designation or in hearing protection zones. Environmental noise. Remember you are required to ensure, if within your area of responsibility, that all sound suppressed engine covers and exhaust silencers are maintained in their proper position whenever plant, equipment is in operation. Manual handling. Always consider using a mechanical aid first. A load does not necessarily have to be heavy to cause an accident. Consider these points. A. How heavy is it? If above 25 kilograms seek assistance. B. Are you capable of lifting it on your own? C. Where is the center of gravity? D. Has it any sharp corners? E. Is it out of balance? F. Are there any nails or splinters? G. Is there a safe route? H. Do you have the right PPE? Lifting properly is a must. 1. Wear gloves to protect your hands. 2. Keep your feet slightly apart. 3. Bend your knees. 4. Keep your back straight. 5. Take a good firm grip. 6. Keep your head up when lifting. 7. Pull the load into your body. Breathing apparatus. This apparatus is to be used by trained and certified persons only. Self-contained apparatus. 1. Ensure that the cylinder is fully charged before fitting the face piece. 2. Always allow sufficient time to leave the work area before the cylinder runs out. Emergency breathing apparatus set. If the audible alarm on the emergency set operates, leave the work area immediately. Compressed air breathing apparatus. 1. Ensure that compressed air breathing apparatus is only used with a suitable inline air filter. That is dragger. 2. Ensure that both the breathing apparatus and the inline filter has been cleaned and maintained before use and at least every month thereafter, in accordance with the approved procedure, standard and by an approved person. Housekeeping. Housekeeping is one of the most important single items influencing the health, safety and environment of any location. Good housekeeping is not a burden if constantly maintained and not left to an occasional cleanup. A. All stairways, passageways and gangways shall be kept free from materials, supplies and obstructions of every kind. B. Ensure materials are offloaded and stacked neatly in designated areas. C. Materials and supplies shall be kept away from the edges of hoistways, ladder access, stairways and floor openings. D. When protruding nails are found in reusable boards, planks and timber, they should be removed immediately. E. Tools shall not be strewn about where they may cause tripping or other hazards. Tools not being used are to be placed in a tool bag, box and shall, at the end of each work day be collected and returned to the tool store or toolbox. F. Keep your job area clean. Remove scrap and rubbish regularly to proper containers or disposal area. G. Toilets, wash-up facilities and drinking water are provided for your convenience and comfort. 
please help to keep them clean and sanitary. H. Keep rooms clean. Do not let soiled clothes, food scraps etc. accumulate, especially around hot pipes or electric heaters. I. Spillages of oil or other substances must be cleaned up immediately and disposed of by the approved method. J. All flammable liquid and dangerous substances shall be stored properly. Slips and falls. Every year slips and falls account for a large proportion of injuries at work. This is without including falls from heights. The biggest contribution you can make in preventing such accidents is by keeping your workplace clean, tidy and free from obstruction. Do. Keep your workplace tidy. If you do spill anything, clean it up immediately and dispose of it correctly. Use the proper routes and walkways. Avoid shortcuts and make full use of handrails. Wear sound footwear. Report damage or obstruction to floor surfaces, handrails and fencing, as well as poorly lit areas. A prompt report can prevent an injury. Make sure that any temporary openings in floor surfaces and walkways are securely fenced off. On completion of work, replace gratings and covers securely. Do not leave obstructions in walkways. Allow the leads of portable tools and lights to trail where someone may trip over them. Rush, running will increase your chances of having an accident. Walk blind. Make sure that you can see round or over anything you are carrying. Chemicals slash dangerous substances. Chemicals and substances used or handled in the course of your work are not generally harmful, if handled properly and used only for their intended purpose. It is most important that the manufacturer or supplier's advice when given is followed implicitly. If you are asked to use a chemical or substance and are not aware of manufacturer's or supplier's recommendations for its use, ask the supervisor's advice before using. Remember colon the company will make available any special equipment or clothing required when using certain chemicals or dangerous substances. You have a legal obligation to comply with all rules and regulations laid down by the company for your safety and that of others. Control of substances hazardous to health, Kosh. The regulations for the control of substances hazardous to health aim to make the workplace safer by dealing with substances that could be hazardous to your health. Should substances prove toxic, harmful, corrosive or irritant, Kosh assessments shall be carried out for their storage, use and transportation. You will be given information as and when necessary. If not, request before using. It may sometimes be necessary to use mechanical ventilation or extraction equipment. In this event you are urged to make sure that this is used correctly. Similarly you may, on occasions be asked to wear protective clothing or respiratory equipment. In which case you are under a duty to do so. Often, substances being used, when mixed with others, can create yet another substance, maybe a gas or a vapor and this substance could also be harmful. Should you be asked to use a substance which you are unsure of, contact your supervisor who will obtain the health and safety data sheet or arrange with check department to have an assessment done on that substance. Explosive oxidizing corrosive. Harmful or irritant. Extremely flammable highly flammable. Very toxic or toxic. Liquid petroleum gases. Uses. 1. Always place cylinders wherever practicable in such a position so that should a leakage occur it will be dispersed away from the working area by the prevailing wind. 2. Ensure only approved hoses are utilized. Unclipped push-on connections must not be used. 3. Ensure that all appliances are fitted with individual taps. 4. Keep cylinders outside of all work habitats and buildings. Piped gas to appliances should be secured to the wall or floor and adequately ventilated. 5. Keep cylinders away from means of ignition. 6. Store upright in a lockable approved case or compound away from other compressed gases. 7. Empty cylinders to be moved to store as soon as possible that is at time of replacement. Cylinder in relation to vehicles. A. 
all appliances must be fitted with a control tap. B. The area around the appliance must be lined with fire-resistant sheeting. C. The area around the appliance must be kept clear of combustion materials. D. All appliances must be turned off when the vehicle is left unattended. E. When cylinders are being transported they must be kept upright and secured to prevent movement. F. Cylinder must not be used inside vehicle. Compressed air. Air at the pressure commonly used to drive compressed air tools can cause severe injuries. Dust, swerve and grit can be blown into the eyes, a burst hose can whip about and cause severe physical injury. If compressed air is applied to equipment not designed to take the pressure, severe damage can result. Do Inspect hoses and coupling before use, discard damaged items. Ensure that quick coupling are properly locked together. Use safety pins and whip arresters on all joints. Ensure, before connecting an airline, that the equipment is designed to withstand the supply pressure. Shut off the air supply and bleed off the pressure before disconnecting the hose. Do not improvise with Jubilee clips, use only properly designed hose connectors. Dust yourself down with a compressed air line. Indulge in horseplay with air hose. Scaffolding 1. Scaffolding must be erected or altered by trained, competent scaffolders. 2. Only use scaffolding that has a valid green scaff tag. 3. Make sure that the scaffolding is safe before you attempt to work from it, ensure the scaff tag authorization is within date. 4. Never climb a scaffold always use the access ladder and make sure it is securely fixed. 5. Do not place objects in such manner that they could fall off the scaffold, only use a scaffold for the duty it was intended for. 6. Clean up the scaffold of all scrap and debris when you have completed your work of if the weight of the scrap material is building up. Be aware of people working below. 7. Report any noticeable defects to your supervisor immediately. Altering scaffold could lead to disciplinary action. Lifting operations and lifting equipment. Serious incidents can occur if lifting operations are not adequately planned and completely executed. All lifting operations shall only be performed by authorized competent personnel. All lifting operations shall be planned and co-coordinated from start to finish by authorized competent personnel. Only certified lifting equipment authorized for use by the company shall be used. Damaged or defected lifting equipment shall be reported to supervision immediately and returned to stores for quarantine or disposal. Lifting operations areas shall be barriered off where appropriate to protect other personnel. 39. Mobile work platforms. Mobile work platforms will include articulated arm platforms, scissor lifts, and crane jib baskets. These should be in good mechanical order, be properly maintained and inspected before use. All personnel should be properly trained and certificated for use of the particular platform. A work platform basically consists of three main parts colon. 1. A platform for persons equipment and tools. 2. A structure to support the platform. 3. A chassis on wheels. These are two basic types colon. Dangers to watch out for include. People, tools or materials falling from the platform. Overturning due to gradients, wind loading, outriggers not in use, trailing platform cables etc. Collision with power lines buildings, other vehicles etc. Failure of supporting structure or power transmission. Basic rules, before use check the following. 1. The machine has a current test certificate and through examination report. 2. Safe working load and maximum number of persons allowed on the platform is conspicuously marked on the machine. 3. Provision has been made for safe access on the platform. 4. Controls are clearly marked and easily understood by the operator. 5. Outriggers are fully extended and properly support the machine. 
fit sill plates or spreaders where necessary. 6. Operators are properly trained in the safe use of the machine. Power tools. Do. Oh make sure before using a portable electric tool that it is in good order. Oh look for signs of overheating, loss of speed and irregular running noises. Oh use the right tool for the job. Oh keep electric cables away from water, oil, heat and sharp edges. If left in gangways, cables may be cut or cause someone to trip, wherever possible they must be carried overhead. Oh ensure you have the correct length of electrical cable or compressed air hose serving the apparatus. Oh check all hoses and couplings in compressed air tools. Never use a portable grinding machine that has been dropped. Damage may have been caused to the wheel resulting in breakage when brought up to speed. Get it inspected by a competent person. Dot. Hand arm vibration syndrome. It is your employer's job to reduce the risk of you getting hand arm vibration syndrome where this can reasonably be achieved, especially if you have to carry on using high vibration tools. A mech will ensure that. The use of high vibration tools is limited, ideally avoided altogether where practicable. Low vibration tools are purchased wherever possible. Tools are adequately maintained. Information is given to personnel regarding recommended exposure times, symptoms of the condition and ways to reduce the risk. You too can play a part by Informing your supervisor about any tools or processes, which produce high levels of vibration so that the risk can be properly assessed. Ensuring that you keep up blood flow whilst working by keeping warm, especially your hands by wearing warm gloves and extra clothing in cold conditions. If you're smoke, try to stop or at least cut down before and while you are at work. Smoking affects the blood flow. Exercise your hands and fingers regularly to improve blood flow. Use the right tool for the job, making do with inadequate tools can mean greater vibration or increased grip. Do not use more force than is necessary when operating tools. Try to avoid long periods of using equipment without a break. Short bursts are better. Keep tools in good working order, if they are in bad condition ask your supervisor to get them repaired or replaced. And most importantly, don't ignore symptoms, if you think vibration could be affecting you, see your doctor and if they give you advice, take it. Personal equipment. All electrically, battery operated tools, instruments, must be declared for inspection and approval before use. Any equipment must be inspected by yourself prior to use in order to ensure that it is in good condition and suitable for the work to be carried out. Hand Tools The main cause of injuries involving hand tools are the use of unsuitable tools, their incorrect use or their incorrect storage. Do Use the correct tool for the job, never use a spanner and hammer use spanners that fit the nut or bolt head properly. Keep your hands behind the cutting edge when using cutting tools. Keep chisels and other sharp tools in a safe place, not in your pocket. Keep tools clean and in good condition. Protect the edges of sharp tools, both when carried and in store. Wear eye protection when chipping, scaling dressing stone or concrete, or whenever there is danger of flying particles, remember others as stated in the section on eye protection. Do not. Use damaged or worn tools, hammers with loose heads, spanners or wrenches with splayed jaws. Use a file without a handle. Place small tools on open grating floors, they could fall through and hit someone. Return them to your tool bag or tool store after use. Abrasive wheels. Do not attempt to change an abrasive wheel or disc unless you have been trained and issued with a certificate to do so. Do not use any abrasive wheel or disc for cutting or grinding without a guard being fitted. Do not at any time remove a guard from a cutting or grinding machine. Always wear eye protection, goggles or visor, when using or when assisting anybody who is using a cutting or grinding machine. Air-powered cutters, grinders must be fitted with an oiler and filter unit. Ensure that the correct type of abrasive wheel or cutting disc is fitted to suit the type of work being carried out. 
If a wheel or a disc is chipped or cracked it must not be used. The speed in revs per minute of the machine must not exceed the safe revs per minutes marked on the wheel or disc. If excessive dust is caused by the grinding process an approved respirator must be worn. Welding and Cutting 1. Always use oxygen and acetylene cylinders in an upright position, where possible use a cylinder trolley. 2. Keep oxygen cylinders away from oil and grease. 3. Store oxygen, acetylene and LPG cylinders separately in the cylinder store in the upright position. Separate full and empty cylinders and label correctly. 4. Inert gases should be stored separately and in the upright, fixed position. 5. Do not watch welding operations without wearing the correct eye protection. 6. Welders must wear the correct personal protective equipment. 7. Welders must protect others' workers from arc flash and sparks by using screens where appropriate. 8. When welding near flammable materials, beware of flying sparks and hot slag. Keep a fire extinguisher available and always check the area before leaving. 9. Gas welding equipment must be fitted with flashback arresters and non-return valves. 10. Always ensure that all valves are closed on all cylinders when not in operation. 11. Observe additional hot work requirements as designated on the permit to work. 12. Ensure gas cylinders are in the upright position and secure. Welding in confined spaces. All heating and cutting torches etc. must be removed from all confined spaces to fresh air at meal times, on of shift or earlier if the work is completed. It is the employee's responsibility to ensure that his oxygen and fuel hoses are isolated at the source, at the end of the working shift. ARC Welding 1. Use only normal electrode holders specifically designed for arc welding. Do not place electrodes against cylinders to strike an arc. 2. Be sure that all welding cables are capable of carrying the maximum current requirements for the work in progress. 3. Check before use that cables and connectors are in good condition and free from defects. 4. Protect your eyes and skin from the effects of arc radiation. Helpers and other workers in the vicinity may also require protection from the welding arc by means of screens, goggles or anti-flash spectacles. Welding Fumes The level of harmfulness of welding fumes is related to the nature of the metals being welded and whether or not the metals have been plated or painted, beware of galvanized steel for instance, when a powerful lung irritant zinc oxide will be given off and beware of old lead paint which can give rise to fumes which may cause lead poisoning. Welding in confined spaces or poorly ventilated rooms particularly can give rise to high levels of fume and or lack of oxygen. Kosh required an assessment to ensure the necessary precautions are identified. Electricity Electrical equipment and cables can without any warning kill or cause severe injuries and burns, so never tamper with electricity unless you are a competent electrician and authorized to do so. 1. Do not interfere with any electrical equipment. Repairs are an electrician's job. 2. Always check for defective cables slash plugs slash sockets before plugging in. 3. Never overload electrical equipment. 4. If a fuse blows, report it. 5. Switch of and disconnect any electrical equipment that sparks or stalls, and report it. 6. Do not let cables trail across the floor. 7. Disconnect equipment when not in use, do not pull the cable to disconnect, pull the plug. 8. Avoid kinking, twisting, binding or crushing cables. 9. Keep all equipment clean and dry. 10. Do not use portable tools near flammable vapors. 11. Do not stand in a wet area when using electrical equipment. 12. Electrical repairs are an electrician's job. 13. Ensure equipment an intrinsically safe when designated. Pressure testing. There may be a requirement for two types of pressure testing. A. Strength testing, 
where a pressure is applied to prove the mechanical strength or integrity of equipment, weld or fabrication. b. Leak testing, pressurized to ascertain the integrity prior to service, operation. All work will be carried out under a permit to work using suitable materials and calibrated equipment under direct supervision of a person competent to carry out such tests. If high pressure testing is required then this will be carried out under the supervision of a specialist test engineer who can evaluate the stress within pipe work and or vessels. Never cross barriers around pressure testing, look out for signage showing that pressure testing is taking place. Working with asbestos. If you suspect material contains asbestos, do not commence work. Inform the supervisor. The supervisor must inform check advisor immediately. Excavations. 1. When working in excavations always make sure that there are, dash. A. Safe means of entering and leaving the excavation. B. Ladders available and placed in the excavations at regular intervals where the depth is sufficient to require their use. Beware of slipping especially in wet or greasy conditions. C. A permit to work is in place where required. 2. Dependent on ground conditions never work in an untimbered trench of a depth of 1.2 meters, 4 feet, or more or on head of timbering unless the sides are battered to prevent materials and soil falling into the trench. 3. Do not enter excavation unless it has been inspected and is considered safe to do so by the supervisor. 4. Materials and soil must wherever practicable be at least 900 mm from the edge of the trench. 5. Ensure that block stops are in position where vehicles have to approach the trench edge. 6. Ensure that adequate barriers are properly placed around all excavations. 7. Use proper gangways for crossing trenches, never jump across. Remember. One cubic meter of soil weighs approximately one and a quarter. One and one fourth, tons. Confined spaces. A confined space is any enclosed space, above or below ground, where a hazard to health may exist due to lack of, or enrichment of, oxygen in the atmosphere, or a potentially hostile environment. Places coming within this definition includes, but are not limited to, excavations culverts, manholes, sumps, drainage systems, unventilated rooms, tanks, boilers, heaters, flues, chimneys, silos, vessels and process columns. There are several regulations covering the entry into confined spaces, which must be followed. Do not enter any confined space until safe system of work is in place and you are familiar with the requirements and procedures as stated. Explosive Ordnance Devices Cock face a big challenge to clear a large amount of unexploded ordnances, which were found in all areas of Kuwait after liberation from the Iraqi invasion. Post-liberation a program of explosive ordnance disposal, EOD, has been led by Kuwait Ministry of Defense, KMOD, to clear areas from dangerous unexploded ordnance. Although great progress has been achieved in respect of odd clearances, complete assurance for all operational areas within cock premises cannot be guaranteed due to various factors such as, type of clearance utilized, variety of problems encountered at different situations including sand shifting, excavation works and oil lakes formed. It is to realize that odd problem may diminish ultimately but will remain a potential threat for foreseeable period of time. Keeping such considerations in view, protective measures and safety aspects have been formulated which must be implemented by all employees belonging to cock or contractors. The adherence to such measures will reduce the risk pertaining to explosive ordinances. The following precautionary measures shall be ensured to reduce the risk from unexploded ordinances. No work shall be carried out till the area has been declared free from explosive ordinances. The clearance certificate for any area within the company premises shall be issued by Directorate, Asset HSE Team. The workers prior to deployment in the field must be made aware of prevalent danger due to possible presence of explosive device.
the workers shall attend odd familiarization conducted by AMEC as part of the induction program. It is advisable not to take any shortcuts while traveling in the oil field areas, designated routes should be followed. Action on finding suspected unexploded ordnance. Even in odd certified area, there is possibility of explosive presence due to shifting sand, excavations etc. The following precautionary measures shall be kept in view to minimize the dangers associated with discovery of suspected explosive ordnance. 1. Do not touch the suspected ordnance. 2. Stop the work immediately, clear the area and inform all personnel of the prevalent danger. 3. Note down the location of unexploded ordnance or suspected object, and place visible markers at a safe distance. 4. Inform respective area fire station immediately. Through radio on cock fire channel or by telephone. Heat stress. In Kuwait summer the intensity of sunlight and ambient temperature will increase. Whatever ethnic background we have. All of us are at risk from heat stress to some degree. Heat stress occurs when the core body temperature exceeds a safe level. The body's temperature regulation goes out of balance. This can cause serious health problems, including heat cramps, heat rash, also known as prickly heat, heat exhaustion, heat stroke. People adapt to hot conditions over time by sweating more and by changing their behavior in order to cool down. This called acclimatization. The risks of thermal stress are greater for unacclimatized people. For example, if you have recently arrived in Kuwait from a cool climate or if you are not used to manual work. The risks of heat stress are also increased if you are dehydrated, overweight or unfit. Have diabetes heart disease, high blood pressure, have poor nutrition, have a small body size, are aged over 40. All of us will be exposed to hot conditions to some degree over the summer months and there is a risk of dehydration and heat stress. For high-risk jobs a risk assessment will be needed. This might mean providing shaded areas, cooling fans, cooling vests, and regular rest breaks. As an individual there are things you can do to reduce the risks for yourself. Aim to drink 4 ups of cool fluid every hour, about 1 liter. Stop work if you become too hot, dizzy or confused. Rest in a cool place, loosen or remove clothing and drink some cool water. Apply cool water to your head and face using a cloth or towel. Watch out for your workmate. If they show signs of heat stress, get them to do the same. Allow enough time to cool down. It takes about 30 minutes to cool down after becoming overheated. Get plenty of rest and sleep so that you are fit for work. Avoid alcohol, caffeinated drinks, or heavy meals. Drink plenty of water in the evening so that you replenish your body fluids. Make sure you have a balanced diet. If your urine is dark and concentrated, this is a sign of dehydration. You will need to drink more water. Hydrogen sulfide, H2S. One of the most common hazards associated with production and processing of oil and gas is the potential for exposure to hydrogen sulfide, H2S. Accidents and incidents involving H2S can be prevented by good planning taking adequate precautions and proper use of personnel protective equipment. General Precautions AMEC personnel are required to follow all cock procedures and guidelines relating to H2S. On arrival at a cock facility personnel should familiarize themselves with the emergency evacuation procedures, requesting clarification from cock operations if necessary. Warning Signs, Notices in general cock operations are aware of and have marked with warning signs, areas with a presence or suspected presence of H2S. Typically wording on warning signs is Tox gas, H2S, danger. All unauthorized personnel keep clear. Where warning signs such as these are displayed or otherwise advised by cock, no mech personnel are to enter the area.
the only exceptions would be personnel entering an area for a particular need as part of a planned entry by cock under strict controls with specific work permit and appropriate personnel protective equipment, PPE. Please give comment and suggestions. Thank you. Subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Thank for visit our channel. See you next class. Thank you. Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone.